Ziga Vertov was a chief innovator in Soviet documentary filmmaking in the 1920s to the 1950s. He focused primarily on the experimental and politically driven content and led the Kino Eye movement that concentrated on a cinematography based film style with an observation on editing. Vertov created one of the most notorious works in film history, Man with a Movie Camera, which will be a major focus in this video. This film deploys the Kino Eye technique, which describes the use of the film camera as to mimic the human eye to capture reality, but in a way that the human eye could never see in solitary. Vertov was also a published film writer who started his own work and disseminated the Kino Eye or Film Eye. Being a major influence in the 1920s, one can study his authority through the limits of technology in his time of practice. Casey Neistat Casey is an American YouTube content creator and influencer. Neistat started his career in television production and has since converted to the daily video log films on YouTube. He currently has 10 million subscribers on YouTube and is known to be one of the best creators in his field. His transition to vlogging has given him a platform to discuss personal and political issues to a mass number of viewers. His vlogs follow his daily life including travel, technology reviews, events, and family life. Neistat has won multiple awards at the Streamy Awards and is still creating content at present. Peter McKinnon McKinnon is a Canadian filmmaker and photographer based in Toronto, Ontario who reviews film and photography equipment through vlog style videos on YouTube. He currently has 2.7 million subscribers on this platform and had 1 million subscribers within 9 months of his first YouTube post. McKinnon uses new film technology in his videos to review their quality and components for viewers and other filmmakers. He is one of the most popular video log content creators on YouTube and continues to produce films at present. So. What do these three filmmakers have in common? They share a desire to create films that capture reality through a certain perspective. Although they share the similarity, there is a major component that differentiates them. The development of technology. This video will use these three creators as examples to explore what Seth Feldman describes as the peace between art and the machine. It will argue that Feldman's reading of Ziga Vertov's Man with a Movie Camera and the relationship between art and the machine equates with contemporary styles of content creation through YouTube in a similarities and differences component. Yet the relationship has evolved to reflect the modern socio-political discourse regarding mass amounts of information in a less detailed manner, compared to Veritov's focus on politics in the 1920s Soviet Russia. Seth Feldman writes in his paper, Peace Between Man and the Machine, Vertov, the filmmaker and advocate of mass filmmaking, could well be thought of as a pioneer in the building of a system in which millions of people reconstruct those fragments, building personalized multimedia websites that are then made available to millions of others. Vertov, the manifesto writer, was like so many writers today, trying to find the words for what all this meant, and how it might be used for some greater good. Certainly, were Vertov alive today, he would be pleased to see that the cinema eye has never been more potent or busier and he would agree that never in human history have we so desperately needed to make peace between people and their machines. Feldman suggests that Vertov's influences spark the pervasiveness of cinema and multimedia in contemporary terms. One can create the connection between Vertov as a pioneer in YouTube content creation. But how are these two filmmaking styles similar? Let's compare a few clips from Man with a Movie Camera and Neistat and McKinnon's vlog work. Encoding Stuart Hall of the Birmingham School of Cultural Studies, with a major influence in media studies, proposed the encoding slash decoding model of communication, where he says that encoding is when one produces a representation directly with a series of meanings. The encoding in this case is Vertov's intent while producing Man with a Movie Camera, or the technologies that he used to produce it. It is impossible to determine one's intent, but for the case of this video, we will use this apparatus of Vertov's video camera as such. Let's take a look. Transitions. At this point in cinema, the dissolved transition was fairly new. It was originally introduced according to Michael Frierson in his book Film and Video Editing Theory, How Editing Creates Meaning, in the 17th century with a traditional projector called the Magic Lantern Slideshow, but was only mastered in the 1900s in film. Here you can see how Vertov used this transition as a means to create his experimental style. This encoding with the technology that he was provided in the late 1920s being film in a large and loud movie camera was impressive for its time. Being that these cameras were extremely loud, Vertov was forced to film in areas that were crowded with sound and motion. It seems as though his style is reflective of vloggers we see today, yet limited by the technologies that he is using. Transitions now have a host of different approaches, like the zoom, the fade, the wipe, or the washout 
that is only made possible by the equipment that is now available. Vertov's early meditation on transitions is now seen to be littered through all types of movie making and vlogging. So, the art that is created here, as Marshall McLuhan suggests, is a reflection of the media, or the media as the message, or the media as the extension of man. Another similarity through Vertov and Neistat and McKinnon's work is the representation of film technology as their content. Man with a movie camera essentially follows a movie producer, or Vertov, filming the documentary content of the film. As you can see here, there is a clear representation of the type of technology that was in use at the time of production, the film camera and a clunky tripod. On the other hand, Neistat and McKinnon are both notorious for making technology reviews. They buy or are sponsored with film products and technology. In their reviews, they use the equipment as the media while reviewing it, similar to how Vertov reflects the media in his work. The final similarity is the role of decoding with these filmmakers' works. Decoding, as described by Hall, is how meaning is interpreted by a recipient and viewership as opposed to encoding the intended meaning by the sender, or Vertov, Neistat, and McKinnon in this case. In the 1920s, Man with a Movie Camera could only be screened at the traditional movie theater or private screenings because it was disseminated on film, whereas YouTube videos are available to anyone with access to a computer and internet. This is a similarity in that they both intend a large viewership with the equipment that they are given, but it is much easier to find the differences in this association. With the development of technology comes the adaptation of dissemination or decoding. While videos are now viewed on YouTube, they are formed in a different way than they were in the 1920s. Feature-length films and moviegoing is still an option, yet the popularity of such has declined. In home theaters and YouTube, the nature of video decoding has adapted to encourage shorter films with compact information. Similar to Instagram, Facebook videos, or Snapchat, YouTube has re-engineered the qualities of film viewership. Although equated as a similarity earlier, the role of technology as content in film has a major difference and that is the type of technology that is available. Due to the evolution of technology, or the machine, as Feldman writes, the reflection of content has changed. The technology represents the socio-political discourse of the time of production. For example, Feldman writes with regards to the evolution of technology that Proof came in 1991, when television news, videotapes, and other new instruments of life caught unawares were used as tools in the destruction of Stalin's much corrupted heirs. Here, Feldman suggests that only with the introduction of new film equipment came the ability to critique Stalin's public persona on a global level. Bertrand Sazier writes in his paper an interpretation of Man with a Movie Camera that Man with a Movie Camera refers to the ability of man, in the generic sense, to reveal the political and emotional behavior of people thanks to a movie camera. So if this is the case, one can situate his theory in contemporary terms. The participants react to the presence of a movie camera. Yet, now there are differences. With cell phones so pervasive, and small cameras like GoPros so discreet, people now act with less focus on the presence of a camera, reflecting now the political discourse of present. A good example is the flawlessness of how Neistat and McKinnon impose their opinions. Less people are surprised by the addition of a camera, making it easier to include this technology in situations potentially impossible to otherwise in the 1920s. This has allowed for the political discourse to change. For example, the Arab Spring, a social media-driven revolution, would have a completely different outcome. This is only one example of how technology has changed political discourse. So as some have argued, Man with a Movie Camera is used as a form of propaganda in Soviet Russia. It reflects the middle-class Soviet worker to encourage development and advancement under Joseph Stalin. Say, Neistat and McKinnon were alive in the 1920s Soviet Russia with their technology, there may have been a different public opinion. So. Is Ziga Vertov the first vlogger? Well, he sure has pioneered styles that are now extremely present in YouTube video, but Vertov was a vessel through his machine in a way that is now impossible because of modern technology. Vloggers are also a vessel of their machines, meaning the media as the extension of man, but they now reflect an evolved sense of meaning, one that is more available to the public. The art is very much a reflection of the machine, and the machine is always evolving. With this evolution comes questions. Are we now better off with the development of discourse and easy access information? Or has the penetrating influx of information numbed our perception of right and wrong? In no way will the film camera or the iPhone camera dissolve. Its presence is crucial to the dissemination of information. It is now in the hands of the public, for better or for worse.